Yeah, I mean, I guess we, we'll just call the regular uh, August 16th select board meeting to order. Um, we've got Brad Town, John Quinn, and myself, Justin Lawrence, from the select board along with Vince Conti. Um, for changes or additions to the agenda, we have uh, an addition for the Vermont Agency of Transportation uh, bridge replacement on US Route 302 as an update. We'll add that in. Um, any public comment? Hearing none. Uh, we've got Jamie Smith with GMT. Hi. Hey, welcome. Thank you. Um, so I'm not sure what's best. Should I share my screen or do you all just want me to kind of talk about the service a little bit? I think most people might have the presentation. We can, we can try to share the screen, Jamie, if you like, but everybody does have a copy of the presentation. Okay. On the board. I think it would be good for the Orca video. Yep. It's, it's saying host has disabled the screen share. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Oh, he just didn't, sure. Vince didn't want to get up. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's just, I didn't that. I just think it's good for like, uh, thinking. Let's see. Did you, are you not the host on that one? Yeah, I'm going to have to do yeah, the host over here. Not on that one. <laughs> Isn't technology fun? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I don't have it disabled. Still saying it is, but that's okay. I can just walk through it. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Sorry, I'm just going to open my presentation up. So thank you everybody for having me. I just want to first sort of apologize that uh, we have not looped in the town of Berlin into this process yet. Um, we did launch my ride service in January and it sort of shifted from being a VTrans project and a community project to being one that was led by GMT. Um, so we were really sort of focusing on uh, downtown Montpelier where the bulk of the service is but now that we have you know the first two quarters under our belt and we're starting to iron out the kinks of the service um, you know we had a conversation about bringing the town of Berlin in I hope somebody from um, the select board or the town is able to join our my ride advisory council meetings um, so it's you know GMT, and then we have a series of community partners, including uh, Sustainable Montpelier Coalition, they're our main community partner. Um, and then we have a number of area uh, businesses and organizations who come together every other month to talk about the service, how it's working for folks, um, and how to make improvements. So with that, I'll just sort of jump into the second slide. So. Uh, the service uh, that I'm referring to is called My Ride by GMT. So it's sort of think Uber for public transportation. So it's a flexible route, flexible schedule. It's technology enabled. Um, so folks who have access to the app on their phone can essentially call the service um, in whatever their schedule is. So they can, they can book the trip same day um, in advance, however they wanna use that. Um, operates Monday through Friday from 7 to 6 p.m. and then Saturdays from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. And so if you're familiar with downtown Montpelier service, uh, this, this uh, my ride service replaced the Capitol shuttle, the Montpelier circulator, and then the Montpelier Hospital Hill route. So I'm clicking to the next slide with the map. Um, the service area that we cover is roughly 12 miles. Uh, it started as a seven square mile radius. We've added some geography since launching. So you can see that it covers some of Berlin. Um, clicking to the next slide with the app photos. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure how familiar folks are. Sorry, I have kids in the background. So if you hear cartoons and kids, that's my apologies. Um, it's, it, it's very similar to Uber, where you put in your starting destination, your ending destination, 
number of passengers, and then you're given a series of proposals uh, that meet that criteria. So you can really customize it to uh, go to your, you know, whatever location you need to go to within that service bubble versus a fixed route service, which, you know, we had fixed, fixed stops. And so at some point or another, somebody might have had to walk from the bus stop to their appointment or their location. Um, now they can be dropped off door to door. You know, you can essentially be picked up right at, at your house um, and dropped off right at the door of wherever you need to go. So I'm just clicking to the outreach slide. Sorry. Um, so at the start of this, as I mentioned, uh, Sustainable Montpelier and VTrans really took the wheel. Um, they identified uh, a series of folks who um, needed some very specific outreach and discovered a cohort of folks who might uh, need a little extra assistance at the start of this service. So we did a lot of onboard uh, communication to passengers. We worked with the community centers, the senior centers, um, and really did these sort of one-on-one -on -one meetings and interviews with folks, um, you know, folks in the Montpelier Housing Authority locations in Montpelier and really walked uh, them through that. Obviously, technology uh, is not something that everybody's very comfortable with. And so we do have a few other options for those folks. We have a call center um, and, you know, folks are able to just call and book their ride directly on the phone if they don't have the app. So we did a number of onboard passenger surveys, um, as I mentioned, uh, and then we did a lot of work with the advisory group. Sorry, I've got a crying three-year-old. <laughs> um, so I'm just clicking to the early engagement slide. Um, so these are metrics so far uh, through the end of June. We've done uh, 12,000, over 12,000 rides to this point. Uh, the average ride duration is about 11 and a half minutes. So if you're familiar with the regular fixed route service, it often took 45 minutes, sometimes longer to get to your destination, depending on whether or not the bus had to detour. Um, and so, you know, 11 and a half minutes from start to finish is actually a pretty good ride rating um, or ride duration. The rating for, for app users, and I'll get into, for app users is about a 4.8 out of five. Um, the utilization numbers is essentially, you know, how many trips per passenger, for, per driver revenue hour. And the aggregation shows the percentage of time that uh, that rides are shared. So we're using our regular vehicles, our same buses that we were using for fixed route service. And uh, as much as, as possible, the algorithm in the app is connecting people um, who are going in similar directions and putting them on one shared vehicle to make the service a lot more efficient. So the, the booking behavior slide uh, shows a little bit about how folks are using the service. Um, the circle on the, the left shows uh, the light blue is the number or percentage of passengers who are booking using the app. So right now it's only about 33%. Uh, and, and the darker blue is passengers who are booking through our call center. So they're calling, they're working with our CSRs at Green Mountain Transit to book their trip. And so that's just about 70% of people who are using the service are booking through the call center. Um, and then the circle on the right is uh, bookings by type. So whether somebody is doing a recurring trip or a one-time trip, and you can see an overwhelming majority of folks are, are using the service uh, for one-time trips. So if they decide, you know, in the morning or middle of the day that they want to go to lunch, um, they can just call up that service for them uh, and just, you know, do a one-off trip at that point. I think the, you know, I anecdotally, a lot of folks are still working from home or working remotely or teleworking. Um, so I do think that those recurring trips will start to increase as folks start getting back into the office. 
Uh, so the next slide, the hours booked in advance, this just shows some behavior. Um, a lot of folks are using it on demand, as I mentioned, but you can see uh, the folks who are booking their trips in advance. Um, this just gives an indication of how far in advance they're booking. So about half of the folks are booking 48 hours or more in advance. So likely those are folks who are using this service to get to and from medical appointments. Uh, the ridership to date um, has, has fluctuated, but it has grown considerably. Um, as of March, it, was, it had uh, met and exceeded the pre-pandemic ridership that we were seeing on the, the routes that it replaced. So for us, that's a really good measure. Um, obviously, our pandemic ridership is about 50% lower um, than it normally would had COVID not happened. And so there's still room for improvement there, but um, we're seeing regular increases in ridership. So we're pretty hopeful that that will continue. Uh, the utilization number, again, that's uh, the number of, uh, of trips per driver revenue hour. So it's just showing for us, we look at this number and we just see um, how efficient the service is. When we launched the service in January, uh, we had a lot of uh, restrictions on board our vehicles. We had only 50% of seated capacity, so we only were allowing uh, eight people at a time on buses. We've since lifted those restrictions, um, and so we, we're starting to see these utilization and these aggregate uh, numbers coming up. So more share, shared rides, more people um, taking similar and like trips. So the use of my ride slide is showing uh, the origin and destination information. So a majority of folks are traveling from, you know, Montpelier out to the Berlin Mall to Walmart. Um, that's one of our main locations uh, being served. And then that's sort of it for for this um, slide deck. I have. I'm happy to answer any questions that folks might have. Does anybody have any questions? No. Brad? No. I'm Thank you. I appreciate your time. I don't I don't know if you were anticipating questions, but it appears that you've answered them all. So <laughs> no problem. Um, I look forward to continuing to work with the town of Berlin. And like I said, I hope somebody can join us for our uh, every other month meeting um, and figuring out how this service can, you know, better serve your town. I did write a note for that. So we'll have a discussion on maybe John would be willing to do that. Sounds great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <coughs> thank you. Bye. Oh, oh, hey, Flo. Hi, everyone. All right. Next up, we have the Vermont Agency of Transportation. Thank you. <coughs> Bridge replacement on 302 update. Yep. We have uh, Mahindra and Amy joining us. Hi. Hi, there. Hi. Um, yeah, I am Mahendra Tillyar, uh, VTrans uh, project manager for this project. Uh, and uh, I know you guys asked us to make this presentation short and uh, we shared the slides with you. Hopefully you have had a chance to look at those. And uh, we, I am here with uh, Amy Spera, our consultant uh, with Gill Engineering. She's the project manager for this uh, consulting project. And uh, with that, I'm leaving it to Amy to answer any questions that uh, I may not be able to do. Otherwise, it's all yours. OK. Um, this is a, I haven't reviewed these slides. I, I didn't have an opportunity to. Um, you had some questions about the abutments, right? Uh, the, the abutments, are, the, are you taking out the old ones and pouring new ones? Yes, we are. So at the end of the project, the old abutments will be completely gone. Am I, am I reading this correctly? It's going to be 30, 35 feet longer? 
Yes, that's correct. So the new abutments will be behind the existing. Um, so the span's increasing significantly to 95 feet. So during construction, in order to accommodate that, there will be um, temporary support of excavation involved. The, the, I may have just missed it, but the other thing I was wondering, um, it said that the bridge width was sub substandard and the proposed bridge is 56. Seven, 56. yeah. 7 feet. Um, what is it now? Um, yep, let me pop that open. The reason we're calling it substandard is because it doesn't match the approach roadway width. Um, so the road kind of necks down to get to the bridge. Um, so now we're widening the structure. So the new structure will match um, the approaches on each side with that center turning lane. Okay. So I'm just flipping through my plans to get that um, existing width for you. Existing width is 41 and a half feet and we're increasing inches. Okay. Those were the only questions that I had. <laughs> Great questions. On which side of the bridge are you, okay. keep, or is the bridge gonna keep the, the uh, sidewalk? Yes, there's one five foot sidewalk. On which side? Yes, sorry. I don't know, show. Keeping a sidewalk, was that the question? Yes. And which side okay. of the Yes, the proposed bridge will have a sidewalk on the same side that it currently is, so the north side. The north. Mm -hmm. And that'll be a five foot sidewalk. Is that going to be just a sidewalk or is that going to be multi-purpose? Just a sidewalk. Um, the bridge will have two eight-foot um, bike lanes. Yeah, five-foot on the summer. Within the pavement, paved area. Is there, are they eight or five? Because it says five on the summary. So they're, um, they're five feet with a three-foot wide buffer. Um, so sorry for I misspoke there. So it's a five foot lane and then there's the three foot of kind of that diagonal striping and then the travel lane. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah, in case uh, you are wondering, the construction will be in 2024, April. Yeah. Is there is there anything that the town of Berlin is gonna have to do for this? No. Okay. Probably, probably during the construction, we might need some uh, some help uh, to do with uh, with the public. In a public, in we will have some public information officer, so that person might need some help from you guys if we need it. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Well, we appreciate the update. Of course. Well, thank you. Okay, Thank have you. a great night. Thanks. Night. Thank you. All right, next up on the agenda, we have uh, the ARPA fund usage discussion. So we got around $145,000 coming in this year. It's in. Or that we've already gotten. And then next year, we'll get another one, but that doesn't include some additional. That hasn't been determined yet. Right. And I don't know. Um, what the board's thoughts were on that, but where we could spend it or where we should save it. Or well, you can't save it. Well, we can, you have to give it back if you don't use it, don't you? Right, it has to be spent. It has to be spent by the end of the third year, fiscal year. So you have right. three years to spend it. Right, so we can no. use it for budgeting. No. I, I think when-, when, when what are the, Go ahead. Sorry about that. Um, I think when you add it all up between the municipal money and the county money that we'll get, it equals out to about $350 a person uh, in the community. So, you know, the quick math showing against 2,800 people, we're, we're just under a million dollars total. So that's what I, yeah. You know, and that, what, what are the, what are the spending restrictions on that other than the time frame that we just discussed, obviously, is there anything that we can't 
I mean, what do we need to use the funds for? Basically, uh, we can use it for infrastructure projects that we can use it for anything that is related to improving a situation like COVID again, right? Space. Or if we want to look at an expansion to allow safety in the mall type of thing, you know, one at a time and enough space for two people to be working. Um, there's, there's things like that you can use it for wastewater, clean water projects also um, qualify for the use of those funds as well. Uh, the other one that uh, that can be used for, um, for example, the police force. I know last year Barry did, Barry City uh, did some things with theirs and I looked into that. Um, what I found out is any basically COVID related incidents calls that they've been on overtime or whatever, they can get a, a bonus stipend from the ARPA funds for that. Anywhere from I think it's eight to 13 bucks an hour for that. So I did take up, I haven't had a short conversation with the chief on that just to see how many hours did we have roughly just for the hilltop alone that were attributed to basically COVID calls, right? And it's about 800 hours. So we could look at something there if, again, if we wanted to as well for some of that. I think from, from my perspective, this is, this is a one-time shot for this money, right? What are, the, what are the things that the town wants to do long-term that we'll never have the money to do or that we're gonna have a lot of trouble paying for? Whether it's bonding for a bridge, replacing a bridge that we haven't been able to fix, uh, and, you know, wastewater to expand our, our wastewater and it, to be able to either put more people on it or more businesses on it, the, you know, those are the things that come to my mind as far as you know the the big ticket items that the town is going to have a really hard time with doing in the in the future because of the price tags. I mean, this is a this is a one time shot at this money, and that one of the things that I think that would be nice here in town is I don't know if you've ever done research on records in Barry City or any place like that, but everything's digitized. So you can research your land records. You can actually go online and get land records and pay for them and print them off. There's, I mean, everything's available there, um, which makes it a lot more convenient should something like this occur. Because I do remember when we were doing title searches through COVID, getting complaints that, you know, the access for title insurance, for example, was one of them. So um, that's one of the things I definitely think we should consider. Actually, I really think we should do it anyway, and it would be a great use of the money. So, how, are you, how are you coming with your thoughts on the wall? The wall? The wall's going to be repaired. We put the, uh, the expansion on hold until we knew the money we were getting and had the discussion about what we wanted to use it for as well. We put that basically on hold, but the wall itself, is, is going to be repaired in September. I don't have a final date from Connor Construction yet. He assured me that they'd have it on their schedule in December, uh, September to do that repair. So what were the other big ticket items that were coming up? We have Richardson Road. We're coming up on Richardson Road. That'll be a big one. Um, so we're going to have, uh, expansion of the sewer or water lines should be paid by the users. You know, realistically, yeah. it's a pay for play type of system. So, well, what else? What were your thoughts? Any specifics, John, as well? Well, and, and I, I don't know enough about our uh, wastewater, you know, system. It, it was just one of those things that um, the governor talked about. You know, a lot of the towns uh, where they've had you know, wastewater treatment plants that are over capacity and they, they'll, they don't have the money to be able to upgrade. This is that opportunity. Um, I will give you some information. We, we've had an issue uh, with the, the, the wastewater station down on Barry Montpelier Road. The pump station. The pump station, yeah. But you see the, our wastewater all goes into Montpelier. Yeah. All the sewers. So Montpelier is running sub capacity. And that pump station is going to be in uh, it's 30 plus years now, I believe. 
and we did a tour of it a couple of weeks ago and went down in there and it's it's in uh, it's going to be significant work and it's not going to be cheap and i i agree with brad that you know it's uh you know it should be paid for by the users but it at some point, uh, the well, what's happened in other towns is these systems have gotten to the point where you can't you can't put that on the user base because it's so expensive. Um, and I'm not saying that that's the case here. I was just trying to think of different kinds of long -term infrastructure projects. The other one, and, and I know you looked into this, Vince, is we're right now we're set to bond for you know a million four. Do we need to bond uh, for that money? Uh, that's a long-term financial debt to the town. Is that is that really in our best interest? So it's another option for sure to be considered. What's what's do you know the interest at the bond bank for this? Uh, I don't have it in front of me, but I think it's less than two percent. Well, if inflation keeps going, it's going to be cheap money. Do you have a, have you, is this your initial list or do you already have a list started? No, I, I have ideas. I mean, I'm not in favor of having the town in debt, but at the same time, it is cheap money. Yep. I mean, it sounds like we have plenty of different ways to spend all that money. That's funny how fast it goes. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I think I think we should definitely look at a lot of different options. Um, well, I think we need to prioritize it and narrow it down that way. With between her notes and mine, what I'll do is I'll I'll take and I'll make a list and I'll do some high high level number crunching to see what things are going to be, and then I'll present something back to you guys yeah. at the at the next meeting or two meetings. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think you're right about prioritizing just because there are, maybe there's some key pieces of infrastructure that if we didn't bond and paid for that we wouldn't do otherwise and yeah. vice versa so it's a good initial starting conversation for this um and i i you know i think i think we'll as we kind of think about it a little bit more some probably other things will pop up yeah. and we'll go put in good use and we'll just have to figure out what's the best the other thing the only thing i was thinking is is if we take in um, uh, can we use that money to leverage or is it no so, because I was thinking these two culverts out here on um, Crosstown, they say they're in good shape, but I don't know how much long, you know, I, mean, I can't remember the last time those things were replaced. But you can't they, replace they, them with culverts anymore. They have to be... Oh, that line, bottom, whatever, yeah, archways. Um, and, the the yeah. only thing now is, is that they're not in too bad a shape and they're still round. <laughs> it might be time to see about sleeving them. Right. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, sleeving them. Yeah. Can, can we can we just talk about that to, to help Vince out? Get some kind of general direction on what we'd like the money for, not specific projects, but maybe specific types of projects. So it, let me give you an example. For me personally, I do not think we ought to be paying wages with with this money. I, I, I think that would be just money out the door and a, and a wasted opportunity. Well, I think um, I agree, and I think that because uh, that's an ongoing expense, that once this money's gone too, it's going to become an expectation, potentially. Um, I, I agree. I, I think I think if we could just agree or not agree um, that this should be, you know, infrastructure projects, whether it be like the Richardson Road types or those culverts that someone um, I could just hear mentioning, things like that. Those things are great opportunities for us to. You know, uh, avoid those costs in the future, and you know, set us up for you know the next well, thirty years. And even to Brad's point, where the two percent bond rate's low, if we were to use that money to maybe amend a situation that's going to go bad in the future, and interest rates could potentially rise, that might be a better use of the money, so that we didn't have to borrow at a higher interest rate down the road. You know, um, so I, yeah, infrastructure, infrastructure. Yeah, and the, the kind of the big, as you mentioned, John, the the big like ticket items that are kind of once and done. And, well, you know, the, the only thing with infrastructure is is that it it helps the community. It it uh, it uh, makes the town more pleasant, more valuable. 
Yeah. And I think this is, I, I just think infrastructure in general is a good use for it. Well, it'll help us from potentially going deeper into debt down the road and yeah. having yeah. an increase in our property taxes as a result. So. And, and I did, I did um, indirectly, uh, secondhand, uh, get some information from Mount Lakes of Cities and Towns, and they can certainly help guide us on some of those bigger projects on what other towns are doing to give us, you know, some thoughts in case, you know, there's something that we haven't thought of in the infrastructure space. Uh, and they're, they're certainly willing to help where they can, is from what I'm told. Because yeah. I think I think Vermont leagues of cities and towns receive close to a million dollars to help towns uh, not make these decisions, but guide them on these types of decisions. Gotcha. So, so my homework at takeaway is uh, I'll look at uh, a number of infrastructure projects. I'll talk to Tom on the White Wastewater and Clean Water Act side as well. Um, talk to Rosemary. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And I'll see. I'll put something together with some you know, rough ideas and maybe some ballpark costs from yeah. what we know and then I'll have something to the board in the next uh, next week or so to maybe pick and choose from. We'll get right on it then, huh? Oh yeah, of course. Okay. Thank you very much. Anything else you want to add, John or Brad? All right, perfect. Uh, Thank you all. Oh Flo, yes, anything you want to add? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was just saying thank you um, to all of you and also to Vince for putting that together. And let us know if you need a special meeting as well. Okay. Thank you. You can't see my face, can you, Flo? Good. Um, <laughs> all right. Final review and approval of the traffic ordinance. I made the, uh, the changes that we talked about in the... Uh, from the public hearing in that as well. Um, again, that's all I'm looking for is the approval to move forward with that so I can put it out in the public, get it posted, go through the 40 whatever days it is for it without any, uh, to see if there's any uh, any public comment on it or. Uh, the fire line stuff, did we get? I, I put that up to 50 from the 25 that it was. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is that what they, is that what Joe had said? It's what he mentioned. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I just guessed. It all seems well And then the big one. So the, the big one is the entire length of both sides of the road with the exception of the sign parking spaces starting 100 feet east of the culvert guardrails extending 185 on the south side shoulder That's, of the road. Yeah. So that was the Mirror Lake. That was the, the comp, that was a big change we made that accommodated the, the one lane of parking, right? Yep. On the south side of it. Yep. Just past the the color. So I'm I'm a little slow, I think. Uh, yeah. So we're saying that you can park on Mirror Lake Road, with the exception of. You, you, it's it's worded in there. It's basically if you're headed uh, east over the culvert on the yep. south side, there's a hundred foot section. That uh, that we can widen, grade off, and, and widen a little bit to allow for some parking in that area. Okay. So that was still in the roadway a bit, but it's it's going to be about four feet. You can move off. Okay. We had we had had that discussion at the last meeting because actually we, John brought it up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember it was just the way it was worded it was making me think. Well, it, it was clear to me, but I'm a slow reader, so. <laughs> you know, I, went out with, I went out with Tim, we measured it, and looked at it, and tried to choose the best spot to keep it as safe as possible as well. Flo, any, any questions, any concerns, Brad? None for me. Thank you, though. Entertain a motion. Move to approve the new traffic ordinance as written. Anybody care to second that? I'll second that. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor, say aye. 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 
Motion carries. On down. He just made Vince's day. He's side a huge relief. Uh, town attorney discussion. That one, you, you all have a letter in your package. Our town attorney is semi-retiring as of uh, September 1st, I believe the date is. The question I have is, do we want to take his recommendation and, and look at someone that's still in that firm to take over for him, or do we want to go out and look for another town attorney? Um, I'd take a look at it from a point of view that because it's over the $5,000 spending limit, you're going to have to put it out to um, bid um, or at least RFP. The question is if you want to stay with um, Main Street Law, um, you would have to get, they would have to bid on it too. So being that it's however however I'm not sure when we put it out to bid if we were bidding for Rob's services or if we were bidding for May or Zallinger Cameron and Lambrick services at the time. You'd have to look at the wording. From the previous? From the yeah. previous yeah. I'll think about that's what I was gonna think. Okay. Good. I'll see what was done before. And then the next question would be is I don't know if that was a contract with Rob or the Main Street Law or if it was a, uh, uh, how it was worded because it's kind of open-ended. It's been a while since we put that out to bid. Right? What's that? I mean, he's been a town attorney for decades. Ever since Rob Curley. Ever since Rob Curley. Yeah. Okay, so I'll look at what was done and when it was done last. Yeah. And then, uh, again, I'll put a proposal together to go out and get an RFP and bring it back to you guys. and. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that info insight. <laughs> Just looking out for the town. You've <laughs> <laughs> been, been there and done that before, must be. Yeah, yeah. I haven't. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, next up, who do we have from the Conservation Commission joining us this evening? Uh, because we have the vast and the Conservation Commission discussion. I don't see anybody on we there. We do not have anyone, so I guess I will represent as much as I can. So before before we get into it, um, I, I read the the letters um, that were attached to our packet, and I went out to the conservation committee website, and maybe I'm mis looking in the wrong spot. There, but there doesn't appear to be any minutes whatsoever. Um, so I'm wondering if there if someone just forgot to post them, but there aren't any uh, meetings warned or minutes since June. I, I'm uh, going to follow up on that, John. I, I, I agree with you. I don't, I don't know where they are or what they've done with them. So I keep being told that they do. I never them. got there. I never got there before. So I'll follow up on that to report. your point. I got it. So you, okay. so you went on the website. You didn't see anything. You'll follow up on it. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of, I feel like there's, I don't know if it was the select board's fault, the conservation commission's fault, um, but I feel terrible to have Bass in here. Thanks for joining us today, Josh. Um, I feel like there might have been some lack of communication somewhere along the line in, in relaying some of the information along with the timelines. And, and that may be very well due to the fact that, that maybe there wasn't meetings or, or an active involvement there um, on that end. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, thanks for looking into that, John. Where where are we at with this, Vince, right now? Do you want to give us just a quick overview of where, sure. where you think I, the I Conservation think Commission I, well, stands? I, yeah, I'm kind of in the middle. I've had conversations with Phil recently and obviously with, uh, with Dave as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think where we're at right now uh, to move this forward is a, probably an on-site meeting with, with Dave, his group, and the Conservation Committee there. Um, just to review the issues, and Phil is on board with this. Um, after talking with Phil and walking the trail myself, um, Phil basically also agrees that there really are minimal issues at best uh, from the tower down Darling Hill Trail. Uh, the only areas that really seem of any real concern are through the town forest itself. Um, there's been, as you said, Justin, as well, everybody agrees in the, in the start, the timelines were off, the communication was off, probably on both sides a bit. Um, probably the best way to rectify it is go through it, walk the trail, agree, be done with it, get it documented and be done with it. One, once for all, I think, 
is, is the solution. Okay. Um, there are some questions that uh, that were brought up by the Conservation Committee about um, tracks, the trail being used, and so on. What I can tell you is it, it's not, and I'm not taking any sides, it's not the vast guys. Um, I'll speak as a, a bordering landowner. There are other people using that. So those fresh tracks that they believe they saw were not from these guys because the only access that they had through there was one night, the first night. And the reason I know that is they came, they called me to come down through my property to leave. Okay. They've been going up to do the other work up my property and not through the town forest. So I know that they haven't been going through there. So yeah. there's, there's other traffic through there. Thank you. So, yeah, so I can tell you that, and this is this was this was coming out in my frustration at the last meeting towards the yeah, we'll police them. department um, monitoring the area. Is I, I'm all for and really don't care as a personal landowner about ATVs going up and down the sides of the road, but we've been seeing dirt bikes and ATVs that aren't local people flying up and down, including coming down across our land across the street. Um, so it's, you know, it, these these machines are not fast machines, I can tell you that just from looking at them and the people on them. Um, and I don't know where they're coming from or where they're going, but it's happening more and more, so. Uh, I got pictures if you want some. <laughs> yeah, I bet. So, <laughs> so I think there's two things that the board needs to address at this moment, according to what Vince has told us. <laughs> Number one, because we need to, well, confirm. We know the communication. We know how that's going to work moving forward. What is that? Uh, I'm going to be Dave's point of contact, um, and to the and I will take the message to the conservation commission. So yeah. I should be the point and of contact going to come now. to you. They'll come to me, and I'll go to Dave. Excellent. And then, as far as scheduling the on-site meeting, I think we should we need to do that now, so as not to cause any further delay. Because I ASAP, I appreciate. Anything everything that the crews have been doing up there, everything that VAST has been doing. They've been doing a great job in our forest, I think, as far as I've seen. Um, and I'm happy with all the volunteers. Uh, it's amazing the volunteers that you see coming out of there on a weekly basis. And I really, I really hope they realize how much we appreciate them. So is it possible to schedule this? I mean, I don't know what the wishes of what you guys are thinking, but I'd like to schedule the on-site meeting to resolve any of these issues tonight. And uh, the other concern that I have is I, th these minutes and the open meeting law and what the board feels we should do if we're, I mean, I, one of these, they sent a letter off to the, uh, looks like Vermont Land Trust. Um, and if that wasn't voted on and approved on by them, I mean, do, number one, do they have the authority to send that off to the land trust without, since they're advisory only, we've been informed by them. Do they have the authority to send that off on behalf of the town? And also, uh, if they did send that off, did they vote on it? And, and where are the minutes from that meeting that shows that approval and documentation? Right. Anybody Here's else? my problem. Here's my problem with that. I don't know if it's one member of the conservation committee that spoke for the entire committee or all of them. Right. And that's all I want to know is that it was voted on, it was agreed upon, and that's the right. the right. A, a rightful path as far as they see it. Um, but again, I don't know if it's one person, two people. It, it's very unclear of the structure of that group on how decisions are being made. And I get they're a volunteer group, and uh, but we need to. I mean, the town and everyone needs to know these things. Absolutely. I mean, we're a volunteer group, so. <laughs> so Justin, since since there's no one here from the committee, I'll take the action to coordinate the meeting, and I'll I'll work on that tomorrow. I'll get a hold of Phil and 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 company and I'll coordinate with Dave and then uh, whatever we can reach for an agreeable date I'll let you know as the, as the uh, chair of the board. Okay. This isn't the first time the Conservation Commission has done this, called for a meeting and then not shown up. Well, I understand. I think I think that that's, that's I ridiculous. understand your frustrations and feel that it's a lack of wasting my freaking time. I could have been doing something a little more it. better than this. I I'm not very happy about this. Happy, but uh, <laughs> I bet I get you a smile. Uh, anything else? 
It's not my time, it's his time too. Right. Oh no, it's, I, it's I, the time I'm, that they've Dave, wasted for us getting this off that cool. stopping the yep. Yep. Dave Dave can take a minute to talk. No, yep. I, I respect that. Yep. I appreciate that and I completely agree. But I think this is a good opportunity as well. Uh, yep. for Dave to I talk think about this was our opportunity to talk with them people. Well I think it's also a good opportunity for I agree with you, but I also think it's a good opportunity for Dave to share some of the work that Bass has done up there, some of the things, some yep. of the I mean, we don't need to worry about the timeline so yep. much, I don't think, but some of the work you've done, the the, yep. the people you've had involved and what they've done to, to help us. Got it. No, uh, happy to be here at the table to discuss anything. That's part of the partnership that we signed up for. If there's any issues, you know, we got to come together and address them, so I appreciate that time. I was a little disappointed to receive these uh, letters and stuff, but I think some of it was initial communication. When you get up in there, we don't really know what the Kelly lot is or isn't, so I think part of the next on-site visit will kind of let us all understand where that is and where we can go. I know right near the tower there was a section of land that we were going to uh, kind of establish around the guide wires. To me, that's what I was thinking was the Kelly lot. So um, this next meeting will certainly clear all that type of stuff up. And, you know, we were thought we were in the clear to work up there. Obviously, we weren't until we had this corridor management agreement. So we'll get it there. Um, on the Darling Trail, there's a lot of detail in people that counted trees and what we cut. You know, I my felt when we did the initial walkthrough up there, I mean, we were kind of talking about how wide we needed, what we were going to cut, uh, establish a canopy and stuff like that. So to me, working for like almost two decades with landowners such as the town of Berlin and the conservation committee, is that you do that walkthrough, you do it. And this kind of comes across that before we cut any tree, we needed a blessing. To me, that original walkthrough and establishing what we were doing, that kind of was the blessing. So I was very surprised well, I, to, I to there, see I this. I for that meeting. You know, I so, saw that walkthrough and I completely agree. Yeah. So mm -hmm. certainly if this is going to be kind of the expectation going forward, I think somebody from the Berlin Conservation Committee should be up there on every work crew because we got a lot of volunteers with a lot of passion up there donating a lot of time Five doing this. And it's not efficient if we go up there and say, well, we need this one. Well, we'll get their permission and then if they get to us by next week, we can cut it. It's just not how it works effectively. So, but. On a positive note, uh, we did the bridge. I've been doing this, like I said, for a couple decades. I've done dozens of bridge. By far, that was the most challenging bridge we've ever done because of the lay of the land. Uh, you had the city of Montpelier land. We had to get the excavator on the other side. We got it done. We nailed it. I was jumping for jail. I was in the end zone. And then I get this thing to see that they're worried about a tree that I thought we had already had permission. I'm like, really? It wasn't the bridge that got everybody's attention? It's, it's this other stuff. So uh, I got it. I'm like, are you kidding me? But again, happy to be at the table, happy to be able to have the opportunity to address things and move on and get us on the same page, the same track uh, that we keep going and so looking forward to having a snowmobile trail go up through there and show you what we vast the Thunder Chickens can do for all the other recreationals out there. I think this is going to be a great thing and we just appreciate the chance to have that opportunity. Well, thank you. I, yeah, no, we, I, I, I was a little shocked when we got this and that's where I, I know that I've seen, we've gotten emails before thanking you for the, the amazing work you did on the bridge and all in the volunteer time and I know you put in more time I think than anybody. Um, but so I was a little shocked. I think that's what John, goes back to what John's saying is, you know, we get one email that says thank you, we appreciate what you're doing and then I don't know how this was shortly after we get another one saying, hey, this is where we have issues. And it's almost like it does come from two different sources. Um, so I think, I think as a board, we probably need to take a good look at that once we get the answers to some of these. Do we have any specific things we want? Like when we talk, uh, the Ridgeline Trail, uh, you know, I don't know, like, I don't know, you walked it. Did you see, did you see approximately 100, 200 trees that were cut on the Ridgeline Trail? I didn't count stumps. You, I was looking you, at the width of the trail. And, yeah. I mean, there were a number of, again, small trees. There were a couple of big ones, but if you look at the stump, right, they were growing over the trail. 
Right. They had to come down. over. It was yeah, safety. That's yeah. what everybody Yeah, I going. personally walked it my, myself one night. My wife and I kind of went up there because I saw this. It's like, I got to get up there and see it personally for myself. And I didn't see anything that fell out line, out of line of, you know, best snowmobile practices that we follow in our agreement with the conservation committee. Um, in fact, with my safety hat on, I'm a certified safety snowmobile instructor. I would love to see that ridge line a little bit wider in the line of safety. I know Steve Coro and his crew has been very sensitive to the Berlin Conservation Commission's concerns as we went up through there, and they really minimized what normally we would cut to establish a safe trail both for grooming and for riding and other pedestrian use. So, but you know, we kept it tight on purpose because of our arrangement. So, so the other, while we're on the topic, one of the other things is, do we, while you were up there, did you happen to, since you're representing the Conservation Commission, I'm going to ask you this question. Thanks. Um, do you happen to know if they've done anything to take action against the, the illegal mountain bike trails that are up there that were cut in? Have they done any enforcement on that? Not yet. And have they also provided the certificate of insurance we requested for Mamba? They did request it for Mamba. I believe they have it now. They have they, but they haven't given it to you? I haven't seen it yet. Huh. I think they have it. It makes, me, email exchange on that. makes me feel like they're picking on one crew, and I'm just going to say that publicly, um, because I, 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 it does feel that way. Yeah. Um, well, I have talked to to, uh, to Phil about uh, some signage as well. I mean, there's no signage up there that, that says that says what you can and can't do. Right. So. And they we know we work. know they had some savings on the bridge, yeah. so they so they, I know. Again, I know they're looking at it, but I don't know where they're at at it for some improved science it's time to the information. It's time to there. weed the conservation board. So, John, do we just lose everybody? He's watching movies. Well, this is where we lost our forum. There you, there you are. Oh, okay. Bring it. Had to wrangle up the kids. Oh no! It just went. I didn't. I was wanting to make sure we still had a quorum because yeah. it looked like everything dropped. I can still hear you too. Oh, good job. Well, I couldn't see you, so I didn't know. <laughs> Brad, what do you, 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 any questions, comments, concerns? No, I mean, I'm not a snowmobiler. I mean, this... No, I get it. But, uh, uh, I mean, as long as, long as the trail is safe, as long as it uh, doesn't cause any damage to the... To the for the town uh, property, I'm good with it. Yeah, I just my 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 concern is just like is having, um, and yeah, no, I agree with all of those things. But just uh, I I just I don't know. I feel like we need to have. It's one of the nice things about not having a dog in the fight. <laughs> I, yeah, I get you can it. play middle ground. Yeah. But I'm not I'm not much uh, any of this stuff. It's just the I feel like. My concern, I guess, is on a different level than, than having a dog in the fight. If we're firing off letters to the land trust and they're not voting on it, I just like to see the minutes, yeah. or I, or and I'd like, I'd like to just know there's some uniform, like yeah. the uniform action there. In another thing, um, I get a, and I'd also I get a phone call, you know, a, a bitch on, in a voicemail, and telling me, you know, all this stuff has happened, and then there's going to be a. I, and I wanted to follow up on it, get, you know, and get some questions answered. And my answer was go to the select board meeting. There's, we're going to be talking about it at the select board meeting from the conservation board. And then for me to come here, ruin my whole evening when I had other things to do, and then have not them have not show up. Yeah. That I'm beside myself about that. I really am. Yeah, and I've worked sorry. really close with Mr. Connie on that too to kind of establish. You know, as we said here, we're with the BCC, we're trying to and, patch this yeah. up. We're trying yeah. to make it right yeah, with these people. We've established kind of a better communication chain too. So uh, mm -hmm. we're kind of hoping that your nasty grams like that will not come anymore. And I think they yeah, got the they message shouldn't through. Yeah, so, so. they should be contacting you. You know, I don't yeah. mind them. No, no, but they should, no, should, no, they should be coordinating through. It should, should be. Me. It should be. And then I'll talk to Dave. Exactly, John. Flo, do you have anything else to add? No. So on this map here, the the blue line is where the where the trail was laid out. I think the uh, blue line may be where those guys <coughs> re located the trail because the existing line was the line that the conservation board was supposed to walk with me back a couple months ago 
and they were supposed to contact me when they did it, and they never did. They told me right to my face they were going to contact me, and it would maybe be this Thursday. No, they didn't. They didn't relocate the trail that that far. They that, did that much. I think they did. Yeah, there was a little bit of a reroute. Yeah, and it was I think because it's this. the, yeah, the initial flagging it. area yeah, had a ninety degree turn. That was what I originally and it was flagged. A steep grade, so Steve That's what Carl, I originally flagged, and then the Steve and those guys yeah. Yeah. was found concerned this about uh, it was grooming that. Yep. So they just kind of went right next to it to an adjacent logging trail and kind of made that the trail. It's still an existing log trail. Yeah. Okay. So. So that. I mean that 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 honestly probably should have come to the board. right. Yeah, it should. No, absolutely. Well, and that was going to be one of the things when we did our walkthrough with them, oh, establish no, any of that stuff. And when and it, they don't much, contact to do how it, how much more you get to do on the trail? Um, I think a lot of it is outside the town forest, and now on the Darling side, uh, the ditch work in the uh, water bars is still to be done. It, it, but the initial just, cutting I, is done, and then the Kelly parcel, we got some cleanup there and right below the tower. It, it's mainly just see this. I see do. it says the red line here is the additional trail work completed. So you're still a ways from the from David Plants. So let me, yeah, I can explain that, Brad, a little bit. <laughs> Fairly it's your backyard. I'm fairly yeah. familiar with the property. So I think your poster is somewhere. Ran that link in your pen. Yeah. So this this is the trail that was originally walked and planned for. Yeah. Right. When they came in to do that, the the one time they came through early on, um, there was some steep areas here and some things. So they they found this old logging road here, just kind of in parallel yep. to it, and they readjusted it, went that way. The only thing that they've done through there is they've been through one time, and they they cut a lot of the brush. Um, and some trees that may have been in the in the road, right? That's, that's that the only work boat. that's been done there. In the, that I haven't the been on lot, it. Town <laughs> so I haven't been back in there since they I haven't been on it either. The turquoise line here, the blue line, that's still a logging road? That's yep. a logging that's road. Another, that's another. And the red line is also a logging road. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. Yes. Yep. Makes good. sense. Yep. Yeah. And the ridge line is the same thing. It's like a 15 foot right of way, so we've only cut things that are in that the, right the of way. The ridge line is basically well. done. I think they may be we are about a half a mile from the bridge. Yes, left to that's go. what we're going to do tomorrow night. night. But that's basically done. Tomorrow night we're going to have all that done. On the from the bridge up. Right. Other, other than some of the some trees that were encroaching on the road, it's just been, uh, just been um, low vegetation. Yeah, well, just kind of brush that's been coming up and some trees that have just kind of been growing out at an angle that are, you know, kind seeking of... Seeking the sun. Yeah, seeking yeah. the sun and just, you know, the snow is going to drop them on there. So taking yeah. them now while we're there versus dealing with them two years from now during the winter. And the, yeah, the so. one night, I did go up one night just to see what they were doing for work. And, and I mean, yeah, there, there was a butternut tree that was already down. Yeah. That, yep. You know, just stuff like that. Um, so I don't know. Uh, you know, and depending on where the break was, it would look like you cut the stump too, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I remember I had Mason, my son. And, and on cars. various work crews too, we've had two of the vast trail uh, coordinators uh, for, for the county level that have been up there helping and stuff. So I mean, they're totally happy and feel like we're we're right on track with how we establish according to the vast best practices. So it's okay. you know that made it even more surprising to get this knowing we had the right hands on deck. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Anything else? I guess that's it. I appreciate you coming in here. Hey, no problem. I'll look at that meeting schedule. I'll look at that meeting schedule. As soon as we can, because we'd really like to get that part clean out. It was just so we don't have that one section to do. Yeah, yeah and let's let's make sure that maybe you, you, you can represent the, the Conservation Commission if it's two weeks out and you can go up. <laughs> I'll have already walked it before then. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know what I mean? Like if they can't get up there yeah. no, I'll go. at a time when go. that works for Dave. Yep. Um, and, and obviously you're welcome to go because you've done a lot, but I just want to make sure that Dave's the, the, the yep. key yep. communicator. Yep. Um, yep. My best to schedule it so that someone can be there. Yeah, I'm uh, sure he not, will. But if it's going to be I, if it's yeah. going to be anything long term, I want to make sure that well everybody's still. Yeah, it, it, it can be within the next couple of weeks or something. That's, that's what that's what yep. I'm asking for. Yep. So. Yeah, how did your bridge feel? Your bridge came out all right? Was it it came out beautiful. Yeah, I was so happy when I, I was out of town when they did it, but I went up that Sunday night when I got back and beautiful. Just it like is. I said, delay of the Fair land and what they out. had to work with Let's and protect an existing historic wall. It's like, it's, I don't know how they did it, but I'm a computer guy, so, but uh, it was so impressive. You'll be able to get uh, emergency vehicles up Absolutely. there? Absolutely. Yeah. I'll show you a picture. It's 10 foot, it's 10 foot wide. It's a nice bridge. I want to see it. 
I love that picture of it right there. Yeah, well, I shared the, the email. The Berlin Conservation Commission sent this email. It says, the completed bridge looks terrific. Thank you, Bass team. You can read that. <laughs> yeah. There's three steel I beams underneath that. I don't you see that? those beams. Yeah. Free. I mean, free to yeah. us. Yeah. What do you do? Dropped it. <laughs> Good chance they'll take and destroy it. All righty. We'll get out of here. Thank I'll, you very I'll much for your time. I'll in the next day or two. You betcha. Yeah, sure. You know how to get a hold of me and yeah. look forward so that to the So uh, that has get the uh, sidewalls Great. and everything else on it. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Get your chair back. I'm really happy with it. And that yeah, was on July 28th. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you, Vince. Thank you. Middle man in this. <laughs> All right. Uh, approval of license, permits, vouchers, and applications. Move to approve payroll warrant 22-04 for payroll from August 1st, 2021 to August 14th, 2021, paid on August 18th, 2021, in the amount of $44,133.88. Payable warrant 22-G03 with checks 21346 to 21400 in the amount of $109,758.86. July reconciled bank, bank statements for general fund and sewer water checking accounts, July journal journal entries, and July budget status report, trial balance report, and delinquent tax report. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, all right. Now we got to, next up, we got approval of minutes. I'm going to take the May 27th minutes off because if not, uh, John and I were not here for that. Okay. So we obviously can't vote on that. Okay. Um, so that leaves approval of minutes for July 19th, 2021 and August 2nd, 2021. Move approval of the minutes of July 19th, 2021 and the minutes of August 2nd, 2021. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Just so you remember. Yep. Thank you. Um, round table. Flo, anything? No, thank you. John? I do. Vince, I noticed in your uh, monthly report that uh, you sent us after the last meeting, uh, there was a note in there um, from the police department basically saying that they couldn't enforce uh, Brookfield Road because, it was, because of improper signage. Yes. There's no longer improper signage. We put up a we put up another thirty five mile an hour speed limit sign right at the entrance of Brookfield Road. Okay. Okay. And I guess my my comment to the thing was that that doesn't you know just because you can't hand out a ticket doesn't mean you can't patrol. Correct. And I think our after the last meeting or at the last meeting we agreed that the first the good first step would be to put up the 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 sign the. Uh, digital sign that tells you how fast you're going. That's the post was installed. That's going up tomorrow. Okay. And you'll be able to see it from your driveway. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Brad. Uh, the only thing I would like to say is, that, I mean, just this week, I don't know what we spend on resources and and with with the corner up on Crosstown Road, <laughs> but. A FedEx truck was off there this week. I watched a car fly into the corner. It's right by the old boyer. It's been built up so much over the years. I don't know if you've looked at it. I called Tim and asked him a question. It's about, the ditch is like six feet, seven feet deep right there. And it, it keeps sliding off every time a car goes off there and everybody's, it's 25 miles an hour, but people rip through there. Um, and so the road's getting narrower. And every time a car ends up in there, and it, it's it's usually like you know, a half a dozen firefighters, a couple of cruisers, and a lot of resources going up there. Every because there's so many cars, someone's calling 911. Um, so I don't know. I've got some numbers for you. I did get the chief to run a, a, a report. 
Yeah. From August to August of the yep. number of incidences on Crosstown. And so I don't know if like, not even like the radar, but just like a flashing sign. Cause I mean, I, I don't even know what would prevent it, but I asked him, I was like, well, what about guardrails, right? Well, not drive cars to the center. It's too narrow. Yeah. And it's just, I just. It's right there by Boyer State? Yeah, right across from the picket fence, like right where the pond was. Yeah. See, over the right years, the over the years, the, one of the complaints is that the, the from the Boyers was that uh, the road was getting above their fence. It is. The roads. The well, road. it was actually was uh, maybe it's Paul Irons that was mentioning that it was a, a drainage issue. It is. It, it. I mean, I don't know how. I don't know how it got built. If it's just for mud seasons or what. But the road appears like if you go up there now and you look, you know, the bottom of the fence is there. The road's at least you know a three foot higher. So no, like three or four feet higher than yeah. the fence. So. But that's done on the opposite side of the road where there is no fence. Yeah. And and so I asked about even like what we could do just to even make it a smaller, shallower ditch, or and I and maybe the quick solution is just some like some signage of some sort because I know there's a 25 mile an hour speed limit sign, but nobody pays attention. I I didn't I I didn't know it was like well it's more 25 through there. Nope. It is. nope. So I I don't know. I just that that's something. So how many incidents are there on that road? I have to get to report. Oh, don't worry about it. Though. I can review it. When you, if if you can, uh, see what yeah. the latest traffic count is on that road. I did have it. It was uh, it was like sixteen hundred and something cars a day. Yep, that's yeah, that sounds right. That was the, the last traffic count was around sixteen hundred and thirty-eight. I've got it on a sheet for all our roads. Yeah. Last traffic counts. I can yeah. send that to you as well. <laughs> but it was uh, something like sixteen hundred. Yeah. Plus. So average per day. I was surprised at the number. I watched a lady the other day go right off all four wheels, didn't even hit. She just slid off and went in and landed and almost made it back out up. So, I mean, I'm just, yeah, it, that's an area of concern that I think somebody could get hurt on, too. Well. So I'd like to have maybe get some input from Tim or, or somebody at some point. I don't know how you would ever take it take and fix that because you got so much uh, well, I don't know. to widen to, 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 to accommodate the ditch you'd have to widen the road so yeah I don't know if it was a like a, a he looked like maybe closing it up with a culvert but then you gotta worry about grades with the well plus that if the right culvert ever froze up right you'd be yeah I don't know it's just something we should look at talk about at some point the other thing we should talk about at some point is uh, uh, Airhead Hill Yep. He'd say it, but it'd probably be cheaper if we paved it. Yep. No, I agree. I agree. Got some extra money coming in. Yeah, but no, I know. <laughs> it's not even gonna touch it. It the well the the thing with uh, the thing with like doing any redoing any roads is just so expensive. Yep. And we got so many others that are going to be so much shorter term. Right. We don't have that luxury. But it is, you're right on that. What do you have for round table? In your packets, there's a CB fiber document uh, for review and a polymorphic presentation for review, which is something that we're considering. In fact, John knows it pretty well. Uh, he asked me to meet with these folks. Um, and it's something in addition to our, our website for uh, improving our Efficiency, number one, and on how we do things in the, in the office and also our communication of information uh, to our residents as well. It's, a, it's, a, it's linked to our website and it will link um, to our grand list as well. And we can track and record better all our communication, all our permitting processes can be mapped and put in there so you know each step along the way you'll have access to it to see where it is in the process. If you have a question, you could look at it, jump, uh, Justin, and say, oh yeah, you're in this step of the process. Um, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty powerful tool. Um, again, it's something to review that we'll talk about later down the road, but I just want to make you aware. I do have a copy of the full uh, presentation, and there's also a letter of intent. They just, uh, they're going to have three pilots in the state of Vermont, this company. They've already signed one with Essex Junction. 
Uh, I have not talked to them yet, um, but from what I've seen so far and heard, that they, they really like it. Um, but they're they're one of the first. They're the first pilot. Uh, we're being offered uh, basically the third pilot. I forget where the second one was set up. Is there anything you want to add, John, to that? I know you spoke with them briefly. Yeah, I, I talked to them uh, a little bit about their background, their mission, what they're trying to do. Uh, they're tr they're really trying to pick three or four towns in Vermont to work with. They work in Massachusetts. Uh, they're working with the city of San Jose. They're a startup out of MIT. Um, it looks like a, a pretty decent pro product. Um, and even if, you know, as a startup, they didn't uh, continue, it'd be a product that, you know, we could we could continue to use um, and not, not get overwhelmed or stuck in uh, long term. But uh, just watching and looking at its functionality, I think it could help the, the staff um, and potentially the select board quite a bit with just communications to our constituents and uh, transparency around, you know, roads and uh, payments and things like that. So, uh, and I think I think the price is right. <laughs> and you can run, yeah, again, you can run reports like you're looking for something on Crosstown Road. And I'm just using oh, that yeah. as an example. It's just a huge database. It, it, it is, but it's also, it, it's a good management tool as well. So. Yeah, so it's like basically a CRM or whatever. It is, yeah. yeah. So the downside would be like, so if they're a startup and they didn't continue, wouldn't the downside be that uh, maintenance uh, of the software or anything like that ongoing or expansion, wouldn't that be the only like kind of detrimental or risk, risk that we would have from the town perspective? Yeah, I mean, looking at um, their their investors um, and how much money has been uh, given to them um, and the amount of towns that they have coming onto it. I, they really seem like they're uh, focused specifically on municipal governments. I think there's definitely a, a place there for them in the market. Um, and, you know, when I've, when I've looked around at these types of things, there's usually a lot of customization, a lot of, you know, tweaks per department or per, per municipality no one out there really has a product like this that i've seen so i'm not i'm not real worried about you know them uh getting out over their skis too far and going under um i'm more worried about adoption on our end and making sure that you know if we do use it that we're we're you know putting our best foot forward to make sure we use it to the fullest capability that we can and if we're going to pilot it, they must be guaranteeing or, or saying that, I mean, I didn't look at that, but there must be a significant level of support because if you're a pilot, they obviously want it to be a success. Right. I think, uh, Vince, and you probably remember the towns better than I do, but it's currently working in St. Albans. Um, and were they in Fairfax as well? Maybe it was Fairfax, I was thinking. Yeah, St. Albans and Fairfax. I said Essex Junction. It was, it, you're right. I think it's St. Albans and Fairfax. I, uh, my intent is to before again the whole purpose of this is to get you to review that because I'm going to bring it up we need to make a decision before the end of September with them if we want to sign a letter of intent and move this forward with what they're offering us um, so it's an opportunity for you to review it get some questions back to me uh, that I can get to them uh, and at the same time I will talk to uh, St. Albans um, to see I would, what they think of it and how it's working. I would say put it on the next agenda. That should be plenty of time, and you'll have, unless you don't want to. No, no, I, yeah, I, I, yes, yeah. I do want to. I think it'll be quick. I think it, yeah, I, I, and I think the, the board should, or Vince, Vince should, on our behalf. I talked with um, St. Albans Chief Operating Officer. Oh, you did? Uh, okay. And he, and he said that it was remarkable. Um, just the, the data he could pull from it to answer questions for the public and to also, you know, not, this is going to come out wrong, but track his staff. And I don't mean it in like a performance, what are you doing kind of way, but, you know, how many, how many, you know, um, tickets or how many conversations are, you know, the uh, DRB having a week, you know, to kind of figure out, you know, how and whether or not at some point you need to add resources, right? Or whether or not... Um, exactly. Just how efficient things are running. Right, thank you. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, it's I when I looked at it, it's just it's a client, it's a CRM, it's just a software platform. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it, it, I'm, I'm not done yet. Oh my. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I got three, three, three more things. I'm sorry. Um, the first two will be the easy ones. Um, face masks at the meetings. Do we want to consider if we continue the person meetings with everything that's going on. I know some of the other towns are starting to wear them again in their face-to-face -face meetings. Uh, the DRB has started to do that. Um, I'm just asking the select board what, what they would like to consider at this point. Well, my, my personal thought would be just to follow whatever the governor's orders are. Um, but just follow the state their, guidelines? State guidelines, but I'll let the rest of the board speak. I think if people are uncomfortable and um, want the mask, I think that's that's absolutely fine. Um, I think that you know, for people that have been vaccinated and uh, you know want to follow the science and believe that you know they don't need a mask, I think that's fine too. I think we're at a at a point where people can choose for themselves. That's my opinion. I'll, I'll follow the state guidelines up on there to, just to make sure it's clear, and then. I'll make a note at the meetings that masks are optional for in, per in person if you're fully vaccinated or not. Something, I'll put something together like that. Okay. Uh, now the last one. The last one involves tax stabilization. I've had a, the uh, Dushevitz construction, yep. right? They were approved. Yep. We cannot find, and I checked with the lawyer, any contract agreement that was assigned by that. The only thing that's been signed and approved is the application. I remember when we voted on it. Yep, there's a, there's a minutes of meeting approving it. The, the question I have is, and the question that he has, is does it start now? Would this be the first year out of the five years? Or is it at completion when they have certificate of occupancy? I would imagine it would be certificate of, or no, starting because it wouldn't have been at completion, it would have been from the first uh, start of construction. Substantial yeah. completion or start of construction. Right. So th just from a numbers perspective, we started this year before certificate of completion. Because Northfield Savings Bank, we did have a contract, and their, that, theirs was a little bit different because I think it was a way I read it, it was more of a rehab and not a full new construction. Theirs did not start until they had a certificate of occupancy. For the completion of that work, that's where why the question. Don't feel savings bank. Yeah, where Dr. Butch's office was. That would have that's been incomplete. That wasn't a rehab. No. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was, that was not. A, <laughs> what I mean, was an existing it, structure that maybe in there, but, but so so. Let me ask you this. I don't know. Like we're not generating any tax revenue from them now. Uh, yes. If we if How they got that? their tax bill. If we go back and credit. Credit them or reduce his tax bill. It's one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars this year. Reduction for him. But that would be the first of his five years, right? It goes 10, 20, 30, 10, 20, 60, I think percentage. I'd have to look again. Right. But the percentages change for the five years. And well, there's got to be gone. some additional information on it somewhere. In, there, I, I, on our, in the in the, the, the lawyer doesn't have anything. There's nothing on record or file here other than what about on Orca? The video was there a video archive back. I mean, we would have had that. That again, the only thing that exists that we were able to find so far is the minutes of meeting that document it. So there should be an Orca video. We can, we can look at Orca, but that's just going to be the minutes of meeting anyway. Well, there might be a lot that was. There might be something that was captured there. The, that the, and and what about what is the, the what is the, the planning commission? Right. Well, I would I would say what is the uh, ordin what is the ordinance? What does the uh, the um, stabilization plan say? It doesn't. That's one of the issues. That's why I'm at. That's why I was looking so hard for a contract. Because I think again, the, everything was there for the Northfield Savings Bank, and I used that as a benchmark because that one was complete. It had the signed contract agreement. The only thing that we have on record for Dusevich right now is the, the minutes of meeting that said it was approved. And then the uh, application that was signed. That's it. No, no contract. And I even called Rob, and he looked through his, and he's got, he had Northfield Savings Bank information, but he had nothing, no contract agreement that was drawn up with Dushevitz. So whose responsibility was that to draw up? 
that would have been New the, the previous person in my role. So that would contract have been Dana's responsibility? Yep. Um, I would follow out. To be fair, I would I, personally I would just follow with uh, the um, template from uh, Northfield Savings, yeah. which means it's going to be cer certificate of occupancy issued, and then that's year one for starting the tax break. That's the a pretty big decision. We probably have to have a. Well, the other thing we can't is just make that, can we? No, right the other now, thing, we no, because it's not on the agenda. Right. The other right. thing would be uh, to take and get some sort of a contract drawn up, drawn up with these folks, even right. if it's uh, after. Yeah, well, that's. I'm going to proceed with a contract anyway, but I just need to know: do we start? We'll have to make a decision whether we start year one now and have or a certificate of insurance. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing is with. with uh, I've had some talks with, uh, with Tom O'Connor as well. What about Carla? I haven't right? talked to Carla yet. Carla may recall as well yeah. because she was pretty involved in that. Yeah. So she may. It's clearly, to me, it's clearly been approved. Just yeah. The contract was So one of the things that I, I remember that came out of that meeting as well that I'll bring up was that. Um, some of the other board members weren't in favor of, of approving it. Um, and I think, it, I don't know what to pass by or whatever, but that maybe one of the things we've talked about before was looking at our tax stabilization policy to better suit our town. Um, and maybe maybe have it look more like blended or not, you know, structures and not, not necessarily the structures that are going into the town center. Um, because what, what where my where I felt Dusevich, they'd spent a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of consulting fees to go through the process and met every criteria and at the end we were just gonna say, sorry, you fit everything, you've gone through this process, but no. Um, so I think we should try to look at that tax stabilization policy, and maybe ask the planning commission to, to look at it for a way that better suits the, the growth and development of the town. Anything else? So I'll have this. What? I'll have this on the next meeting for a decision because obviously we don't want it to. Yeah. I, I've got to get back to him as yeah. well. Yeah, good. Yep. Yeah. So let him know where it stands. What else you got, buddy? Uh, just I think that. You no, know, no, one more. The next meeting is scheduled to be on Labor Day. I don't want. Do we want to move it? I don't. Care. I would prefer to move it. Cancel it. Cancel it or move it? Flo? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. I didn't hear what you said. I heard you say my name. I apologize. The next, the next regularly scheduled board meeting is um, scheduled for Labor Day. We had a couple of different opinions. One so far would be cancel it. <laughs> Another one would be I don't care, and one is move it. Um, I, I, I don't know what your what? thoughts are. I'm fine with moving it, and I can be very flexible. So whatever the majority decides. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we got that. Uh, we got some, we put something off till the next meeting anyway. So we probably should take and move it a day or two, or whatever you want to do. Well, the, the only dates that are available that this isn't being used, like DRB's having a meeting, Planning Commission's having their meetings, um, so I can't have it the following Monday cause, cause, or Tuesday because it's tied up, would be a Thursday or a Friday on uh, the 9th or 10th of September, or we could have it on Wednesday or Thursday, the 1st or 2nd of September if we wanted to move it. canceled it and had a long meeting I'm fine with that too like I'm fine with an extremely full agenda and just not having the meeting all together as long as nobody's really going to be impacted by I'll start it. the meeting earlier if we do that I could do that too how do you guys cancel feel about that up. cancel it and double up cancel it and double up if we need to on the agenda and just get it all done could come and have it <laughs> and then that won't maintain and there'll be any special meeting I think, I think the only thing that ever happened when uh, we canceled in, in Northfield was um, people would have to go in and sign the, the bi-weekly payroll 
And I'm not sure okay. what uh, what diet would would want around that or or not, where we'd sign it and then approve at the next meeting. We could we could potentially do a 15 minute Zoom meeting with that only on the agenda to make sure people get paid, though, right? I can manage that with Diane. I can bring him. I can bring him to you guys to sign if that's the issue. I don't know. Yeah, we'll do that either. Both of them. Yeah. Why don't we why don't we just plan on canceling it and doubling up and and then working through the payroll situation if we need to. Does that make sense? Sure. Brad. I don't care. Flo, are you okay with it? Fine that? by me. Sounds good. All right. What else you got? Okay. No, I'm I think I'm done. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Executive session? Yes. Move to enter in executive session.